All right guys, we are out in the yard today doing some truck stuff. I'm going to be installing a set of Timberins on the F-350 trimmer. We're going to be trying to get rid of some of the squat that comes from hauling this camper around. A couple of videos back, or maybe the last video, I'm not sure, you can check it out, I'll link it below. We did a video showing how much squat comes from a 16,000 pound fifth wheel with probably about 25, 2600 pounds of pin weight. And so what I want to do is take some of that squat out have a little bit more level ride, smooth out some of the bumps, things that happen on the highway, stuff like that. One consideration I do have though is that I tow more things than just this camper. So I don't want these Timberins engaging when I'm towing like a utility trailer, towing my boat, things like that. I really only want to use them for really heavy weights, something like the camper, which is the heaviest thing I tow right now. We're going to take a look at these kits. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about why I chose the kit that I did, show you a couple of different examples, get these things installed. We'll check the squat. In a couple of days, I'm going to be heading to Disney. That's about a 3,000 mile trip, round trip for me. So I'll give you my feedback, impressions, how they did. I've probably got about 15,000 miles of towing with this trimmer and this camper in stock form. So I think that 3,000 miles will be enough to give a good opinion of did they make a difference, are they worth it, stuff like that. So first things first, let's get the old bump stops off and then we'll take a look at the two different timbering kits I want to show you. All right guys, so let's get in here. These here are the old bump stops. These are the factory bump stops. And so what happens is when you get enough weight and your leaf springs here are compressed enough, this comes down and comes into contact with this piece of metal right here. What the Timberins are going to do is they're going to be a lot longer, a lot beefier, and come into contact with this sooner uh, and support your frame, support your ride, all that stuff, and give you a little bit more of a cushion there so these are really simple on the Fords. We're going to see if we can do this without jacking the back of the truck up. I see a lot of people put a jack under the hitch and try to get some of the weight off so that these actually come up a little higher. I don't know that we'll need that. There's two 15 millimeter screws here. We're going to take these old bump stops off. The new ones are just going to bolt right on. I have had this tool forever. This is a little impact driver porter cable. I have used this so many times. I can't tell you. I've got these little extension sets on here. We're going to pop this on. Goes right in there. We're going to put our 15 millimeter on. And then this is what we're going to use to take those old bump stops off. I have found very few things over the years that this little drill could not take off. And if it so happens that I do, I've got a half inch impact same same brand porter cable that I use for tires and things like that but this little drill is just awesome so we're gonna get under here and see if it can get these old bump stops off all right guys got both bump stops off with my handy dandy drill here and so you see a lot of folks comparing these to the Timberins, and I'll show you the difference and all that, but they're for two different purposes. These are kind of like a last resort deal. Once you go through all the springs and the overloads, if for some reason you go past that, these are there to be a bump stop. Timberins are gonna be made to carry weight, so they are gonna be bigger, they're gonna be beefier. So let's go check the timbering kits out and take a look at what we've got. We've got two different kits. We got the 350 kit and then the 250 kit. All right, guys, so here is the timbering kit for the F350. That's what the 350 there means. Pretty simple stuff here. Comes with these very dirty rubber things that I'll probably need to clean up. Comes with the spacers or the mounting brackets here. And then the 350 kit comes with these half inch spacers. They just go on top of here then they sit like that. So if you wanted to see just the difference between the two kits, that's basically what the, uh, what the difference is there. So here's the deal. I got an F-250 kit also. And it's the exact same kit, except it doesn't have these little spacers with it. These are only a half inch. Let's take a look at the 250. All right guys, so the kit 
is pretty much the same. Let's double check the bolts here. So about the only difference is the 350 kit does come with a longer bolt to accommodate the spacer. But this is the 350. It says type 545, 250 kit, type 545. It's the same kit, guys. Brackets, let's test the brackets out and take a look. Exact same brackets. So guys, if you don't need the spacer, the 250 kit is $100 cheaper on Amazon right now. Weight limit is the same. I looked on Temperin's website. The weight limit for the 250 and the 350 are the same, and they're way more than you could ever actually put in your truck. A couple of guys that I've known that have installed these, they got the 350 kit, they didn't use the spacers, and they liked the way it worked. So we're going to get these mounted up, see what kind of gap we have, and then we'll decide if we're going to use the spacers or not. All right, guys, so we got one of these mocked up. Install is super simple. There, there's a washer that comes inside. You can hear it rattling in there. And basically, you just line that up in there, drop your bolt in. And then I use a 17 millimeter. These are probably standard and not metric, but it worked just fine. And again, I tightened this up just as tight as I could get it on here. Uh, you can see it's just a washer and a bolt in there. And again, this is without the spacer. And I don't know, you know, as far as difference goes, is that gonna make that much of a difference? I don't know, we'll see. All right, let's get it on the truck and see what it looks like. All right, guys, so it started raining on me. I was not able to avoid the jack. I could not get these on without taking some weight off the truck. This is the gap without the spacer. So guys, I'm not putting that spacer on there. So that's gonna work out great. Honestly, if I had the spacer on there, it would probably be in contact all the time, and that's not what I'm looking for. So I'm gonna get the other side mounted up, and it's a real simple install, guys, right there. It just mounts right up on there, two 15 millimeter nuts on the end, and you're done. So we're gonna get the camper hooked up here. You can see I don't have any weight on it right now. We're gonna go ahead and get a quick measurement. And then we'll measure the squat when we put the weight on it. And it's about 44 and a quarter right up to the bottom of the fender flare here. So let's put some weight on it and then we'll see how much it squats. guys all the weight is actually off the jacks now so that's what it looks like with the camper fully on the truck that took a lot of the squat out I can tell just visually but let's get a measurement all right so we'll get this do the same measurement here to the center so that's pretty much right at 42 and a quarter it's two inches of squat All right guys, so with the Timberans, that gives me about two inches of squat. Now again, I chose to not put the spacer in here. If you wanted a little bit less squat, you could put the spacer in there, but the spacer would pretty much be in contact or the Timberan would be in contact pretty much the entire time. I don't want that. I just want this to take a little bit of the squat and kind of improve the ride a little bit. So if we step back, there's what it looks like. Honestly, it looks like the truck sits pretty level to me because you're gonna have a little bit of rake. We got back from our trip to Disney. Total, the trip was around 2,000 miles, so it wasn't quite as much as I thought initially. But I can tell you immediately, we didn't get five miles down the road and I could already tell a difference with the Timberans. We went over some, some railroad tracks that we've gone over with many trailers, many vehicles, and they're, they're kind of a big deal. And so a lot of times, especially in a, on a stock suspension, you get that you know up and down that you get after you hit a bump. It kind of resonates for a while pretty much that was eliminated with the Timberans. Now I will say when you take that soft squishy ride out basically what you replace it with is a harsher ride. Uh, so there are certain times you're going to feel the bumps maybe more than you would have before but you feel like you have more control with the truck. For example going over 
expansion joints in the interstate, things like that, that would usually cause repetitive bouncing. Uh, there's none of that. Uh, again, if you hit a really big bump, you're going to feel it. It's not like it, it goes away. You're going to feel it, but it's going to be kind of a one and done thing. It's not going to be something that keeps on going or you feel for, you know, a few more seconds afterwards. All right, so I highly recommend these Timberlands, guys. If you're wanting to level your truck out a little bit, you can kind of pick. You know, again, I got the F-250 Timberlands. If you want the spacer and you want to make those come in contact sooner, you can get the F-350 kit. Uh, I will tell you, again, like I said earlier, the F-250 kit is about $100 cheaper on Amazon. I did buy these myself. Timber didn't send me this. Uh, it'd be nice if they would have, but I purchased these on my own. So $100 bucks is 100 bucks, And I didn't want the spacer anyway, so the F-250 kit worked out great for me. If you're interested in seeing like the squat video without the Timberlands, I had actually made a separate video a few months back. I'll put a link to that below. You can check that out. Uh, but if you're interested in these, I also put a link to the to the two kits that I referenced in this video. Uh, both are from Amazon, uh, so the, you know prices are subject to change. But I'll put those links in the bottom as well. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments.